All right, so what I'm going to try to do is go through and um, basically eliminate that really crazy area of like extreme overexposure here that I really hate. It looks terrible. Um, so what I'm going to do is, like I said, do some light linking for this. Whether this is going to work or not, I honestly don't know. But let's find out together, shall we? Um, all right, so what I'm going to do uh, is do flame candle. Um, so I've, I've duplicated the flame mesh and what I'm going to do is flame mesh light walls. Um, so I do need mesh lights don't seem to duplicate very well, if at all. So what I'm going to do is I duplicated the mesh, deleted the mesh light from under it. I'm going to go through and set up uh, another mesh light. And this is just going to be mesh light candle. So I'm going to have basically two, two lights in the scene affecting different stuff. Um, so let me label things really quick. Wax. I think this is my wick. Wick. Uh, stand. And walls. Great, because I will go insane otherwise. Um, handle. Cool. So. I'm just going to go ahead and also, ow, cat, why are you doing this to me? Um, I'm going to go ahead and set the settings of this. So we have this pumpkin orange color um, and exposure of 12. So I'm going to go ahead and grab this pumpkin orange color and set my exposure to 12. Um, and if we render this, it's going to be extreme. Well, it's actually not extremely much brighter than it was before, which is interesting, but um, it is a little bit brighter. So what I'm going to do is basically say, cool. Walls only affect the walls, and then this light is only going to affect this little waxy part. So we should be getting basically brighter light on the walls and stuff like that, but that's not going to be overexposed in the candle. Instead, for the candle, we're going to use this dimmer light. Um, so if we go into Windows, blah, Relationship Editors, Light Linking, and same difference, I like light centric. Um, so I'm going to be like, all right, great. Uh, flame walls. You affect everything except the wax and the wick. Um, and then the candle light is going to affect nothing but the walls. Oh, oh, and I guess I should turn off the, uh, <laughs> the, uh, what is this? What am I going for? Sorry. Um, the, the mesh for the, for the, for the flame itself. Um, so the candle only affects wax and wick. And then this thing affects pretty much everything, except again, those weird little flames and the, the wax and the wick. So when we render that, um, we get something that looks more or less like what we had previously. Uh, but what theoretically we now will be able to do is go into my candlelight and I'm just gonna go ahead and make this like a weird green color. Um, so you can see that the the candle light is now only affecting the candle and it's not throwing like crazy green on the walls. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and see what happens if I take that exposure down. Uh, I'll set this back to my orange color. And I'm just going to take this exposure down until it's less absurdly overexposed on the candle, which it now is. Um, so it's still overexposed on the flame and that's pretty much I've found anytime you take exposure over one. Um, but the candle itself looks a little bit less uh, completely ridiculous and blown out and terrible. So I'm going to kind of run with a value of, um, you know, whatever these values are, seven, I guess, for this. Um, and actually, so I have noticed that the, the candle light has my visibility of the flame turned off. Um, so if we turn that on, it's actually become much less overexposed, but I kind of like the yellow one better. So we're just going to kind of run with that for now. Um, so, all right. What we need now is, since we've taken the exposure of that light down way a lot, we need to mess with the subsurface scattering of the stupid candle again. Um, so a lot of this is just going back and forth and being like, hey, what doesn't look insane? Like if I change this value to get to optimize something better, how do we make the rest of this look less like a solid stick of candle? Um, I did also notice that my candle is apparently very shiny on the outside, which I'm, uh, let us say, not a huge fan of. So I'm going to go ahead and just make that candle a little bit rougher. Um, I guess wax is kind of shiny, but eh, eh, kind of weird looking to me. Um, so anywho, going to go through and then once again, mess with the weight of my subsurface scattering. I'm going to try a value of 
And you can see that now we're getting a little bit more of the candle, hopefully, um, is, is sort of having that subsurface effect on it. Um, and actually, this looks much nicer than it did before, which is exciting. Um, so I'm just going to try a value of like 0.7 for this. Ooh, yes, I like this. And now we're getting this very nice sort of glow uh, up in towards the top of the candle here. And I'm going to see what happens if I also set my scale to 0.7. Um, and again, hopefully the renders are showing up pretty all right uh, with the, the recording. Um, this is the most powerful computer I have access to, and it, Maya just doesn't like rendering. So, um, But yeah, so now we have a kind of less insane looking candle. It's like a little bit less uh, overblown uh, or sort of blown out here, and you still get that nice subsurface scattering. Um, so like I said, a lot of this is just sort of going back and forth and massaging different values until they do something that you don't find um, completely horrendous. Um, this is also taking a while to render, but for a nice looking candle, you kind of can't avoid it sometimes, which kind of sucks. Um, so the other thing that we could do if we, if we wanted to, I'm just going to say that that's pretty all right for now, um, is go through and we could theoretically, like I said before, change the light color entirely. Um, so in this case, I actually kind of don't like, a lot of times I feel like what light does when it comes from a candle is it'll be sort of slightly whiter to an extent here. And then like, as it falls off, it becomes redder. Um, and actually I'm sure there's a way somewhere to calculate that. I just don't know what it is, honestly. I've never really thought about it. Um, but what I'm going to do is try making this light color on the light itself a little bit whiter. That's maybe too white. It kind of stands out too much against the background. But um, if we make that a little bit less orange, it'll kind of give the the waxy color a little bit more of like a wax color instead of like that really aggressive sort of honey orange color. Um, and now the, the flame kind of looks crazy because it's this weird bright yellow thing in the middle of this candle. Um, but alas, that is sort of what we have. Um, and we can also then, if we wanted to, again, go through and mess with the value of the, the backlight to be like, all right, well, that's, you know, maybe I don't like how this is sort of showing up on the walls. Uh, so let's go through and adjust the value of that. And in that case, I think the value of whatever I had before, I think it was 12, uh, was acceptable. I'm just going to go with that as hardcore acceptable for now. Um, so yeah, that's basically how to make a halfway not terrible looking little candle. Um, the other other thing you could do if you wanted is like, I, I really hate this yellow flame. It, it does make me sad. Um, so <laughs> what I'm going to do is go through, and that is the flame from my mesh light. I'm going to turn off light visible. And this time I'm only working with the flame and hopefully by rendering such a small area, it doesn't blow up my computer. So we have no flame. I'm going to show the original mesh. Um, and it looks pretty weird right now. Um, part of the reason is the shader on it. And we've also turned off all lighting that is affecting that particular um, piece of, of geometry when I was doing the light linking. So what I'm gonna do, go into my little flame shader that I had on here. And I'm gonna see, I'm gonna turn the emission weight up. And now we have my weird little sort of glowy candle thingy again. It still looks a little bit weird, but like, meh. Um, and we could also, so there's a few things we could do. Like I kind of want this to be a little bit more transparent. Um, we could turn on the transmission weight. Uh, and in this case, I actually surprisingly don't despise that effect. I wasn't expecting that to look decent, but it kind of does actually. Um, so in the, the sort of redder areas, uh, I have the little ramp just sort of hooked in here for color. Um, and it seems like in the redder areas, it's doing a nice job of being more transparent. And the yellower and brighter it gets, it, it's uh, a little less transparent. So I, I do actually kind of like that. I think I'm going to, I think I'm just going to leave that the way it is, which is kind of interesting. Um, I will see out of curiosity, um, if we take this yellow value and we make it darker, um, it seems like it gives the, a little bit of the illusion of uh, not being, I guess, as opaque. Um, so what I'm going to do is go through and see what happens if I sort of set some of these values to be blacker and eh, nothing really interesting happening. Cool. Well, either way, the flame looks less terrible enough for me to be going on with. Um, the last thing I want to talk about is 
um, sort of sampling in this scene overall. Uh, and this is probably where my renders are going to get kind of slow and the video might lag. So I'll try to talk you through it the best I can. Um, but if we go ahead and let me just turn off progressive refinement, I'm just going to render this little candle flame. And what we're probably going to notice is pretty aggressive sampling. Oh, thank you for getting rid of the rest of that. Um, pretty aggressive sampling within the subsurface scattering itself. Um, there's a few different ways that you can look at to fix this. Um, in this case, I have a guess at what it is, but you can always adjust the settings for the light itself. So remember the, the candle light is the one, sorry if there's like a poof, my cat's about to step on my, ow, my microphone, evil creature. Um, so this is the only light effect in the candle. So what we could theoretically try is turning up, good Lord cat, uh, turning up the sampling on this slowly to see if that helps at all. Um, and this is again, gonna increase your render time, but can't have super sampling candles. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and in this case, that did pretty much nothing. So what's actually happening here is the, it's sitting like directly on the microphone. I do apologize. Um, all right, so what we actually probably wanna look at is the global render settings for subsurface scattering. So if we go into the render settings and the Arnold renderer tab, and again, there's a really similar thing for Redshift. Um, the subsurface scattering or SSS has right now two samples on it by default. I'm gonna see what happens if we set this up to four. And like I said, anything with subsurface scattering in it is basically gonna have more samples calculated. And this is clearly taking longer to render. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, but the render does look a little bit smoother uh, than, it, than it previously did. Um, so you just kind of want to play with that setting until it's maybe high enough where you get pretty much you want the lowest number possible that doesn't look grainy. Um, there's no sense in doing extra sampling if it's not going to actually increase the quality of your renders. It's just going to take forever to do anything. Um, good Lord. Um, so that is pretty much that. I'm going to just, just for grins, see what happens. Ow, if I set this up to six. Um, just because I'm, I'm genuinely curious. Um, so the other thing that you can look at in general is um, the, the sampling for a particular light. So these global render settings are basically if you have one setting, like all your specular stuff is pretty, pretty wonky looking. Ooh, the six does a pretty good job of that. Um, but that's gonna be, you know, all your specular highlights have really weird sampling. All your subsurface has really weird sampling. Um, if it's just a few shadows that have some wonky sampling in it, you probably don't want to set these samples up crazy high. Um, what you want to look at is the settings in the individual, that looks pretty nice, in the individual light itself. Cat, you are the devil. Um, so I'm going to leave the subsurface sampling for the candle at six for now. And we're going to go in and look at the, ow, it's like kneading me and also hurting me at the same time. It's a delightful creature. Um, so I'm just going to go in and see what happens if I render the bottom of this. Um, do progressive refinement and just cheat and move my candle up here. Um, all right, so I'm going to look specifically at the, the shadow sort of under this little tray thing. Um, and it is a pretty harsh shadow because the only light we have is coming from directly on top of the tray. So it does kind of make sense. Um, but what we see is there's a little bit of sampling in the the floor itself just the color of the floor ouch and that is from probably the mesh light itself so what we could do is go in like i said to our render settings and be like all right let's take the diffuse samples and set them up to six um, and what that's going to do is calculate for every single light in the scene instead of doing two samples for diffuse um, or just like the base color it's going to do six um, Will this make your render look better? Probably. Will it make your render times way higher? Most definitely. Um, so what you wanna do is, I will usually look at what's the main light shining on something or like what's the main light casting uh, a shadow that's a little bit sample-y. In this case, uh, the walls is pretty much the only light affecting that. Uh, and you can go into the light itself and set the samples up there. So we had a samples, uh, we had one sample for this light. I'm gonna set that up to two. Uh, and start my render again. And like I said, this is going to take a little bit longer to render. 
Um, but I mean, immediately the floor looks way less trashy. And instead of just sort of setting all the light samples up throughout the whole scene, we've been able to target one light. So it could theoretically save you a lot of, um, a lot of render time by tailoring individual lights uh, with their samples there, which is pretty nice. Um, you can also, if you want, um, and I've not found a super crazy reason to do this, um, but you can change the shadow color of your lights. Um, so maybe if you're going for a more stylized look or something like that, um, or the other thing I've seen if you, which is like actually kind of a valid reason to do this is um, maybe you're trying to match a shadow color to like an HDRI or something like that and their shadows are like a little bit bluer. Um, what you can do is change that shadow color um, and you can see that instead of being black, the shadow is green. And in this case, it looks insane. Um, but sometimes, you know, for like mountains or landscapey kind of stuff like that, um, it can be a, a pretty interesting way to um, give a little bit of, of a different effect or a different variation to your renders. Um, so that was pretty much my bit on subsurface scattering, honestly. Um, I'm going to just go ahead and let this render. So if you're curious what the, the final... Um, final render looks like I suppose um, you can stick around for that otherwise you can just wander out because I just kind of want to see what this whole thing looks like rendered all right cool um, yeah and I have a deep and burning hatred for uh, what am I going for for the really want just like okay so bonus thing what you can do theoretically and I am gonna try doing haven't helped me um, what you theoretically can do is take the exposure of this light down a tiny bit because I really I feel like the walls are kind of like blown out and I'm not a huge fan um, and actually eh, now nah, I'm just gonna I'll do what I had before and I'm just gonna kind of cheat and move the the walls away because I want that uh, I want that nice little sort of dot <laughs> on the light or on the walls from this light. And I'm doing Alt Z to undo my last camera move. Um, cool. Kind of like reasonably not terrible, I suppose. Um, I am going to add just like a really subtle. Um, oof, that looks hideous. Uh, just a very, very, very subtle. Um, uh, what am I going for? Good lord. Physical sky in here, just because I want a little bit of extra sort of color in there. Um, in this case, I don't think that looks better at all. I think it looks really insane. But anywho. Um, <coughs> excuse me. So anywho, I'm just going to go ahead and render this because I'm being way too weirdly perfectionisty about this. Um, but yeah. Subsurface scattering. It's a fun thing. Um, but it does work really nicely for stuff like candles. Um, if you have anything like skin, wax, um, ceramics usually has some. If there's ever a doubt on whether or not something has subsurface scattering, um, you can go through and sort of, if you have that object, shine a light behind it. But if you don't have that object, look for pictures online of that object with how it's lit. Um, so a lot of times different foods will have subsurface scattering, like meat uh, will have it. Because, I mean, meat is basically just skin and flesh. Um, what a delightful way to describe meat. Skin and flesh. Um, gross. Anyway. Um, but, like, meat will have it. Custards will have it. Pudding has subsurface scattering. Um, I bet you didn't expect a lesson about how to render pudding. But here we are. Um, and you'll also notice that the, the wax strips are kind of coming through a little bit. Um, since they're thicker, the light is sort of dispersing a little bit more in those. I feel like I've actually gone maybe a little bit, a uh, little bit hamsies, a little bit overdone with the, the subsurface scattering, in in terms of the fade here. It's a little bit of a weird looking candle, but candle. <coughs> this is a very weird render. I do actually like the uh, the lighting on here. It's making some nice, interesting specular highlights, which I wasn't really paying attention to at all, but I do like the way they look. Um, and then the other thing that could theoretically make this very over shiny brass plate thing look a little bit this is just a copper preset um 
look a little bit nicer with one, a tiny bit of roughness, and two, if there's some kind of HDRI or something in the scene, you'd get a little bit of reflection in here um, past just these crappy Lambert walls I've added in. Um, but anywho, so yeah, this is pretty much that. This is this is the final render, uh, and there's still a bunch of sampling in here, and it looks terrible, and it makes me sad. I might bump the sampling up higher and re-render later problems. Um, but yeah, so cool.